What's up, you awesome people of YouTube? Today we're gonna be learning about how to make a magic eight ball in C sharp. Now we all know what a magic eight ball is. It's a super fun little shaky ball, and you're like, hey, what is my future? You know, shake it, and it's like, yeah, it's sad and depressing. <laughs> just kidding, obviously. It's more geared towards yes or no questions, or just simpler questions like, you know, will I have children in the future, or will I be successful? Things like that. And you know, it has like 20 predetermined answers that just kind of randomly get generated. And uh, yeah, it's supposed to be magical. So without further ado, let's just get right into it and make it in C Sharp. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and open up good old Visual Studio and we're going to create a new project and it's going to be a Windows Forms app. So go ahead and make that. We're going to call it whatever we want. We're just going to call this Magic 8-Ball. All right, guys, now that we're in our project, let's go ahead and set some additional properties. So we want to go ahead and make this a lot larger so we have a nice big interface. We're going to click on the form and we're going to rename it from Form 1 to magic eight ball and the reason you have to spell out the word eight is because for some reason in the name property they don't allow like numbers and it just it just yelled at me so we're just going to do that and then down in the text area so the actual text that you see in the top left corner we're going to change that from form one to say magic eight ball Okay guys, and the next property you wanna change is go ahead and we're gonna set the background. So the background, I made a custom background. It's just like a Magic 8-Ball background. I'll include it in the description. Feel free to make it whatever you want, but I just felt like, you know, we can go and have a little bit of fun with this and I made my own. So to set the background, you need to scroll to the top of the properties and we're going to select where it says background image and set to none, we're gonna do this. We're gonna click local resource and import. Now I've imported my image. We're gonna go ahead and click okay. You'll notice it loads it in. Now it's kind of effed up right now. It's like off to the side. So we need to fix that by saying uh, we need to find background image layout, switch it from tile to stretch. And now you'll notice it's in the center of the screen, which is good. Now, obviously, we can't just leave it at that. We need a few more elements to our interface before we can start working on the back end code. The first of which is a button. So we're going to need a button to click on whenever the user is done, you know, typing in their question. Then they can click submit. And then, you know, the magic eight ball conjures up a good old answer. So we're going to make it kind of like this big. We're going to change the uh, actual name of the button from button one to submit button. And we're going to go ahead and find the text wherever that is. It says button one. Currently, we're just going to change it to submit. Or actually, you know what? We're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to say, tell me with an exclamation mark. That way they're like, hey, tell me the answer. And uh, yeah, then the next thing we need to do is go ahead and switch the four color to we're going to have some white text here. And then we're going to change the background color to black because that they'll just look nice with that background. We're going to change the font size and stuff to we're going to bump it up to like size. I don't know. 20 or so you can make whatever font you want i'll just stick with the standard one so click ok now you'll notice tell me is very large inside the button and easy to read all right guys now two more things that we need here we need a text box and then a label so we're going to start with the text box so go ahead and find that drag it onto the screen one thing right off the bat we need to scroll down change it from multi-line and make sure that says true that way you'll notice that now it's expandable and you can make it kind of whatever size you want and we're going to of course change some more properties for it so the first thing we need to do is find where it says the name and instead of text box one we're going to say question box and instead of the text box being blank we're going to go ahead and say ask your question here with a couple dots that way when they load it to the app there's like a nice little placeholder there um, that kind of tells them what they need to do so go ahead and bump up your font from size 7 to like 14 ish and then just uh, leave it like that now the next element that we need for this interface is we need the uh, good old label so let's go ahead and take this put it down here in the middle of the screen we're going to switch the auto size property to false that way it's adjustable in size and we're going to make it roughly the size of like the top of the triangle we need it to be relatively wide because it needs to display the entire answer. And some of the answers are a little bit long, considering that the font size might be large. So we're going to do this first. The next thing we're going to do is bump up the font size. So we need to have it easy to read, but not too large. So like we're going to do maybe 12 or so. And then we're going to change the text align from top left to middle center. That way it's in the exact middle of the text box. And we're also going to change the font color or the four color to white. And we're going to change the back color from this control thing to transparent. And one last thing, we need to clear out this text from label one um, to be nothing. And we also need to do, uh, go ahead and rename this from label one to say answer label. All right, guys, we have set up our, our interface. It looks pretty nice. Now, the next thing we want to do is start working on the back end code. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and find your button and double click on it. 
Not only will that automatically add a click method in the backend, but it'll also open up our backend so it, we can access it. Now, before we jump into things, let's kind of think out how this is going to work. So based on the interface we have designed, they're going to ask a question. Once they click the button um, in the backend, we need to take their question, kind of just ignore it, because honestly, we're just generating a random answer. So we need to randomly pick a number and then uh, go into like a predefined list of these answers, randomly select something and then display it on the label. Super simple process and let's do it. So go back in your backend code here and at the very top um, where it says inside this partial class here, we're going to say random, random is new random. And you might wonder what that is. We're just gonna create a new random object and this will allow us to generate random numbers later on. And now the next thing we need is going to be a list of strings. So we're gonna say list of type string we're going to call it answers is new list of string. I know this might not be the most efficient way to do it, but you know, this is a really simple app. It's for, you know, more beginners or intermediate people. Even if you are experienced and you're looking at this and you're like, yuck, why would you store all these answers in just one array? Well, I, I, I'm not out here claiming it's the best, but it is a way to do it. So we're just going to do it that way today. So obviously based off my explanation just now, this is going to be an answers list full of strings. And each one of these strings is going to be an answer for the eight ball. All right, guys, now right inside this public magic eight ball method underneath initialize component, we're going to start adding these strings to this answers list. Now you can come up with your own answers if you want, but I personally got mine from the official Wikipedia for the magic eight ball. And uh, let me pull it up. So right here on this Wikipedia page, if you'll notice down here, it says possible answers. And these are all the possible answers from like the official game. So um, go ahead and do use all these if you want or come up with your own. All right, now there's super simple to add a, uh, a possible answer to this list here. We're gonna just say answers.add and then go ahead and type in your string. So one of the first answers I'm going to use is called it is certain with a period. And that's literally it. So you just take this and you go ahead and copy it 19 more times and then you're gonna change it up. So let me do that and I'll get right back to you. All right, guys, we are back and here we are. We have our all of our possible answers. And let me just add a comment up here. So we're gonna say, yes answers and you'll notice i have them split into a few different categories we have yes answers which are uh you know really saying yeah like whatever you just asked uh, i agree with you basically and then uh there's also the opposite of that which is just saying like mm, that's probably not going to happen and then there's a bunch of ones in the middle that just overall wrap it up so there's 20 possible things there's some middle ones some yes and some no's go ahead and feel free to pause the video and just write all these down if you'd like all right, guys, we're getting really close to being completed here. We just need to find our submit button click method and then do some stuff in here. First, we need to generate a random index to pick from. So we're going to say int index is equal to random.next and answers.count. You'll notice that IntelliSense just already knew exactly what I wanted to do. We're going to access our random object. This dot next method is to generate a random number within some sort of given range. And the first parameter is the range that um, we're giving it. So answers.count is going to be, you know, 20 elements. So we're going to just say, hey, generate something between zero and 19. Then we're going to take this number and then um, obviously index the list for it. So now that we have our randomly generated number, we need to index the list. So we're going to say answer label dot text is equal to answers at index. So the index we just created, um, we're going to take that. Let's just say it's like 10 or something. We're going to say, hey, what is answers at index 10? It's, you know, whatever in here. And then we're going to set that equal to this text property. Now, obviously, we don't need to do anything like dot two string because this, these are all strings and this is of type string already. So there's no need to convert. And that's literally all we need to do. So let's go ahead and save this and then launch our program and see if it works. All right, guys, we have our program launched. So it says right off the bat, hey, uh, ask your question here. I'm going to say, all right. So I clear it out and I'm going to say, um, will I have children with a question mark? And then I go ahead and click tell me. Yes, I will have children, apparently. And I don't know. Um, will I grow old? Super morbid. Hopefully I do. Oh, without a doubt. Thank you. Thank you, Magic Ball, for giving me some awesome um, reassurance there. And I don't know. One more question just to get a variety of answers. We could say, do I need to go to McDonald's? And hopefully it tells me yes. Oh, and science points to yes. Awesome. So guys, that's going to be the end of this tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you learned something. Um, comment down below if you enjoyed it or if you had any problems or questions about it, I'd be happy to help you out. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And overall, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>